Today, it's going to be a showdown between the Ender 3 and the Purusha Mini. Who is going to come out on top? So, today I'm going to wrap up my experience with the Ender 3 and the Purusha Mini. They're two very capable machines, uh, classified as entry level. Probably the Purusha is a bit on the edge of the entry level segment. So let's dive into the specs and uh, I'm going to talk to you about um, my experience with these two machines so you can form your own judgment on uh, which one is best to buy. Let's start from the first obvious spec, the print volume. Here is the original bed of the Ender 3 and this is the original bed of the Prusa Mini. So you can see a side by side comparison. There is a bit of a larger size to the Ender 3. Um, the official spec is 220 by 220 by 250, while for the Prusa Mini is 180 by 180 by 180. Looks like there's quite some difference there. Uh, in reality, it really depends on uh, what is your use. And uh, you see a few a few prints here. You know, both of these could could have been printed on both machines. Um, I end up uh, basically in my day-to-day -day printing not finding a very big difference between the two. I very rarely, if ever, uh, use the full uh, print bed of the Ender 3. But still, you know, that's that's a deal breaker to me. So if you need bigger than 180, then this is completely out. The first important thing to uh, discuss about for me is price, of course. And this can vary a lot when it comes to the Ender 3. I checked the prices of the current uh, offer by, by Creality in their own shop. And this is what I found. The price ranges from a very low $157 for the kit for the Ender 3 basic version, the original one, the one you see here. Actually, the one you see here is uh, not very similar to the original one, but let's say the original uh, Ender 3, so the 2018 version, $157. I really don't know how they can sell it so cheap, but that's the retail price for the kit for this one. For the for the Prusa Mini, you have to shell out uh, 350 bucks, um, and there is a very limited uh, kind of availability. So, of course, there is another thing to uh, consider. Uh, you can buy this printer off of Amazon, AliExpress, Gearbest, uh, you name it. You can buy this one basically only from from Prusa or resellers, uh, local dealers, and stuff like that. I ordered them from their own website because I'm in Europe, so it's uh, pretty convenient for me. What is interesting is that there is the V2, so there has been three iterations of the Ender 3, the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, which we're not going to discuss now because I think it's a bit uh, obsolete, and the Ender 3 V2. So the V2 retails for $260, again, on the website. You can find different uh, options if you uh, like to buy from Amazon, like I do because of the customer support. You'll find links in the description below. So uh, this one, can, you can buy the V2 for 260. So I think I'm going to talk very, very shortly about the difference between the original one and the, and the V2. Uh, not major design, not major differences. There is difference in the build plate. This one comes with this uh, plastic uh, surface. Uh, the, the V2 comes with a, a borosilicate glass surface, if you like that. I'm not a fan of glass, so you see I have a flexible here on the end of three as well. But that, uh, that is a plus. And you will also get a 32-bit board with silent drivers. Uh, because I would have to say the original machine is quite noisy. I have my video on how to uh, assemble dampers uh, if you don't want to uh, replace the board. Because the original one comes with an 8-bit board. So that's the difference. And you have like $100 more to shell out if you want to go uh, for the full-fledged one. Otherwise, you can buy this one and tinker a bit and get it to the other, to the other level. So you can basically uh, upgrade this one to the same level as the V2. So to wrap up on the price, this one retails for roughly $160, this for $350. So that's a considerable difference. Uh, you have to take that into account uh, when you're doing your calculations because, of course, money is a very important element in the choice. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the assembly. Well, when it comes to the assembly, that's pretty easy for both. I would say the Ender 3 is slightly more complex. It comes with the base plate already assembled. You just have to put together this frame and the gantry. 
it's a bit tricky to assemble the screw. You have to be pay a bit of attention there. For for the Prusa Mini, it's quite straightforward. It comes in two pieces, so you just have to slump together and connect a few cables, and you're good to go. Overall, no big deal, no big difference between the two. So I would say that's a that's an even. The biggest difference, in my opinion, is the ease of use. Uh, when it comes to this this machine, it comes uh, from the factory with the Minda uh, sensor, so there is mesh bed leveling by default. Basically, you don't have to worry about uh, leveling the bed. Actually, you can't even do it because the bed is actually bolted to the frame, so there is no way to level it because there's no need. And the three bed leveling is a bit of the let's say Achilles heel of this machine. You have to kind of learn that trade uh, and uh, you will have, you will find yourself um, doing it every now and then or going for sensors or other add-ons to make that easy. That is, I would say, by far one of the favorite upgrades you can do to this machine. But in general, uh, you can take the Prusa Mini out of the box and you start printing and you basically going to be uh, printing with no issues out uh, from the box. With this machine, it might require some tweaking, it might require some fine tuning, you might have some bad experiences with that, so um, you, you have to be prepared to do some tweaking and to do some uh, fine tuning there. I was mentioning the board before, so the electronics are quite in, an important part of the machine. Uh, the, the base one, the basic one, comes with an 8-bit board, it's basically an Arduino uh, board. Uh, While well, this one it comes with a 32-bit board with a proprietary firmware from uh, um, from Prusa. The firmware is open source, so if you're worried about that, you can uh, change the firmware as well. Uh, with this machine, I have to uh, clarify that when I got it, it was a couple of years ago, so things might have changed in the reality world, but uh, this was uh, not equipped with some basic uh, safety functions like thermal runaway. Um, what is Thermal Runaway doing is continuously checking that if it's, it's giving power to the, to the hot end, then you have to see a change in temperature in the thermistor. If that doesn't happen, then you get a, a Thermal Runaway protection error. That is very important because if you have a failure in your thermistor or it falls off of the place, this can cause a fire hazard. So I think that's very important to state that if you're still sticking with the original one with the 8-bit board, you might consider updating the firmware with a, with a more recent version of Marlin that is equipped with Thermal Runaway. Uh, and since I'm talking about Fire Hazard, uh, the Creality machines have a bit of a bad history with uh, fire uh, problems. There is this uh, uh, connector in here, the yellow connector, which is a knockoff of a more uh, famous connector, which is used to connect the power supply to the board. I find several cases of uh, burnt connectors. So what I did right away out of the box, I, I ditched the connector and I used a couple of wires, the thicker gauge I could find uh, to supply the power to the, to the board from the power supply. If you know what you're doing, I mean, the, the only reason why they put the plug there is because they don't want you to reverse polarity on the power supply. So to me, it's just uh, something that if you know basic electronics or basic electricity, just get rid of it and uh, remove the fire hazard. I've read also some uh, frightful stories about the V2 uh, catching fire as well. So yeah, that's, I would say, the biggest downside of this machine. Chinese brand, made in China, so the quality is uh, debatable, uh, I would say. While with the Prusa machine, that's, I would say, the premium you pay is basically for the ease of mind. So you don't have to worry about uh, this thing having any problem um, like any other device that you have in your house, any other electronic equipment. You don't have to be aware that this might uh, catch on fire. And that's it for the electronics. So, you know, I'm quite mindful of safety. That's why I have made a few modifications to this machine and uh, to, to make sure that I don't have, I don't run this risk because I often run the machine unattended. So I don't want to you know, be worried that uh, this might cause trouble to me, uh, my house, and my family. So finally, uh, community support or support in general. When uh, Prusa is uh, providing 24/7 support, they have uh, chat lines, they have hotlines. I have been lucky enough not to have to deal with their customer support, uh, but the reputation of the customer support is very good. 
while with the Creality customer support, I didn't have the need to, uh, to get in contact with them. But I would say even if I had, I would have to find a, a fix elsewhere. Luckily, there's huge community support on these machines. And by the way, most people are just replacing the, um, uh, the stock board with an SKR or, or some other kind of board. Uh, or the l latest and greatest uh, silent board that you can get from Creality. So a lot of support there from the community. I would say do not expect too much in terms of support from Creality itself. Again, you know, visiting the forums and such, uh, there's quite a few bad experiences uh, with, uh, with that one. If you follow the channel, you might know that when it comes to giving a recommendation, my favorite word is, it depends. In this case, I am going to be a bit more straightforward. And I would say, if you have the money, if you can spare the money, just go for the Prusa machine. There's plenty of advantages. And, uh, you know, having made my experience starting with the Creality machine, when I landed into this, it was just so easy. It is so easy to set it up, so easy to start printing. Forget about uh, bad adhesion problems. You don't have to buy every kind of stuff. On the other hand, I like tinkering, so I like this machine. You will see, you see it here. It is barely only the frame left. I mean, I, I have made all sorts of modifications to this machine, uh, but that's also because I think that's part of the fun of the hobby for me. So that's why I also went down this road. On the other hand, so if you like. Um, I mean, if you have more time, the money, and if you like uh, to tinker, there's plenty of uh, sources, plenty of support. You can make this your own custom machine with your own um, with your own customizations. So that is much more, let's say, hobby friendly if that's part of the fun you're having. This one much more reliable, uh, much more straightforward. If you don't want to worry about uh, having to design your own upgrades or print your own upgrades. Yeah, I have my list of five upgrades, which I recommend you go and have a look to. But that's mostly for the fun of it. None of them is, uh, I would say, none of them is uh, fundamental. With this one, some of them are pretty basic and you should be doing them. Unless you get the V2, which is basically integrating some of the upgrades you can get from the community. On the other hand, this machine, if you buy it in a box is 150 bucks. It's $200 less than this. So of course, you know, if you're short on money, if you are on a budget, then you might decide and go for that. If you want to buy it from Creality, that's the price. The prices you get from Amazon are slightly higher. Uh, that also depends on customs clearance and stuff like that. So if you need to clear customs, if you're living in, the, in Europe or in the US, you might, uh, at least for sure in Europe, you might find a nasty surprise when the machine comes with a bill from customs clearance. So make sure that when you buy it, you buy it either from Europe or you can get it from Amazon where there's not going to be, you know, uh, money back guarantee, no questions asked if you have a problem. I will leave uh, Amazon links in the description below. And that's it for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, if you like what you see, you, will, you might consider subscribing. That will be uh, great for me. And uh, that's it for today. So until next time.